On today's video, I'm going to show you all simple ways on how to create status and also transition on Jira workflow. Uh, I know like people were asking like, uh, can I create more status? How can I have more columns in my board? And it's very important for you to know that before you can add more columns, you must first have the status. And for you to have the status, you must first create the status. And for you to have access to create the status, you must be a Jira administrator. And if you are not a project administrator, a Jira administrator for your project, or you will not be able to adjust the status. Welcome back to Aisha Scrum. I'm very happy to have you all join my team. Uh, if you are a new subscriber and my current subscribers, I welcome you all. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in mentorship, do not hesitate to email me at admin at aishascrumtech.com. All right, so for us to do this, I have to go to the project settings and to have the access to the workflow so that we can edit the workflow. So then I go to project settings. Uh, I know sometimes at work, if you do go to your project settings at the side, you'll see the workflow. And when you do see the workflow, you might not have the rights to edit the workflow. That's due to the fact that sometimes your project template is used with a lot of other projects in your company. And by you editing the workflow, it will affect the other team's workflow. So that's why it's very important to have this communication with your leadership with everyone before you want to adjust or readjust a workflow if you got a position as a Scrum Master in a company. So it's very important to communicate because the workflow status will affect the whole board, basically affect the whole Jira board on its own. So for this, my particular uh, Jira board, for me to have access to the workflow, after I go under the issue type, I know like at work, that's not the same for me. Uh, usually the workflow is already there, I can just do that. And then I have to e edit them before I can now see the workflow whereby I can edit the workflow. So when I click on edit workflow, then Jira shows me to my current workflow. Uh, this is the workflow I created uh, and I configured when I just started creating this board, this project on its own. And I have the to-do in progress and done. Uh, at the top here, if you notice here, I love this about Jira, right? Jira is always so simple. And I like that they always give you a nice little tutorial and warning around the site. He said, before you map your workflow here, spend some time with your team, right? Learn what's effective and what's not and how to help your team be their best. And that is so true. Uh, it's very important when you want to create a workflow, adjust your workflow. It's going to be like some kind of team collaboration or team, team contributing on ways how you want your workflow to go based on your project, right? And based on how you're doing your work. And Jira also have very nice... um. Let's click on the link and see right Jira have this very nice um workflow description on how you can use it to support your team. Uh, it's opening up Jira software and uh, mapping your workflow with your team. That means that you have to work this together. You go over it all, it's telling you what all of this means. Uh, it can be up to three to twelve people prep time. Remote in process, just basically giving you the whole rundown on how you can use this. What does this status mean and all of that and the transition, you know, going from that to that. All right, so now that we've seen this mini tutorial, so now let's get into the video. But it's very important for you all to know that uh, with Jira, regardless of the name you're giving the status, Jira have grouped these statuses in these three categories, right? So you have the category of gray, and you have the category of the blue color, and you have the category of the, of the green color. So the, the gray color, it's... Status that you've always you will see around that area are uh, ticket data backlog, uh, to do, uh, in refinement, pre refinement, uh, ready for work. All that is under the gray to do category, right? And the next category is the in progress, which is the blue. And in progress, you can have like uh, dev in progress or in progress, uh, QA in progress, uh, unit testing, all these different type of settings, or anything that's actually being worked on that's in progress, all going to be under that umbrella of in progress. And the last one is going to be the green, which is the done status, which in the done column, you're going to see uh, a particular status that says done, uh, canceled, if they're not working on it anymore, rejected, sometimes you can see that under that done column, or closed, right? It's another popular one under that, and closed, all that is under the status of under done status. So as we are creating this new status, I have to choose which of the status category am I creating. 
Am I creating a status under the to-do category? Or am I creating a status under the in-progress category? Or am I creating a status under the done uh, category? So regardless of the name that you give it, uh, the status that is have to be very, very clearly defined together as a team. So this is a very important thing for me to uh, say before you all. And the next thing you see is transition, which if you all will see that already, I already have that in here, right? And the transition is just saying, uh, what, how would you want the status? Would you want a ticket that been created from to do? Uh, it can skip all the all other steps and just go directly to done. Or where that in that case you have it all as all status, or in this case you see here as any status. Or would you want your your status, your ticket that you must go from to do and in progress? So all your tickets must hit from to do, must hit the in progress column. So if you cannot touch the, that column, it will let you to move to the next stage. And sometimes you'll see this at work too, right? Where you will try to update the ticket and skip a step. Is that about a ticket that want to be canceled? And the ticket was in to do, and they're like, oh, we're not working on that anymore. That's of no value anymore. And you want to drag that ticket from to do to cancel in your green column. It's going to, it won't let you, it will tell you that you must move the ticket from to do, you move it to in, in, pro, in, in dev, in QA, in review before the cancel column. So I'm sure a lot of people have experienced this and that's due to the transition. That's due to the transition they put in there and you that means you must meet all those steps that we all agreed on as a team before we can mark something done, cancel or rejected. So that's just a quick tip I have to show. So now for us to create a, create a status, I have we all have to come together together as a team. First of all, what I've done this in the past, I've helped the team is, we first mapped out our status, like our whole workflow. Like what are we building? What are the steps we're taking to build this? And what must we do in each of those phase that we want to get as a team to put that on our board, right? Um, and this is heavily done in a team that's going through agile, like, trans like they're transitioning. And uh, for team that's already established, I don't think you will ever do this, but for team that's going through transformation where you do a lot of JIRA work, you'll find yourself doing this thing a lot. So then we drew all of that on a paper. It was just easier for us to come to Jira and just create it, you know. But in this case, uh, let's say now we want to add more status on that to do. And for me to do that, I just have to click on the plus sign. And it's going to tell me status capture the stage of your working process, right? Which I was already explaining to us. Or add more status to represent different stages in your team planning, the process like planned, estimated, all of that, you can add different type of status, right? And remember, you must be a Jira admin to do all of this. And by the way, if you've been finding my content valuable, please like and subscribe to this channel. I truly appreciate it. Uh, if you share my channel to other people, if you like it, and also if you subscribe, I really appreciate that. And if you're interested in mentorship, do not hesitate to email me at admin at aishascrumtech.com. So, right. So, let's call this status as ready for, ready for refine. Oh, people just refining. So let's call this under refining because that's still under to do, right? That means we need to start working on it yet. On this status under to do, I'm creating a status called refining, uh, meaning that before we can mark it ready for work, I want it to be refined. So then if it's in refining or we're refining the work, we're going to label those tickets as refining. Then it's saying that, uh, click that to add it. And it's telling us that it's a new one, right? Because I didn't have this in the past. Then I hit add. So now that I created this status on uh, refining, automatically it creates, it comes down here and just give it that transition. I didn't, sh I didn't show yet about transition because I want you all to, to show you all about transition differently. So looking here, it's seeing that, oh, I have a status called refining and it's in the category, like I was explaining to you all about the category, right? It's under the to-do category because if you click on the drop down arrow here, it gives us all the only three categories. Either you're going to have it under the to-do category or in progress category or done category. But I want this refining under to-do category, right? So now with the transition, like I was explaining prior, uh, with the transition, I have to choose what kind of transition I want with this that particular uh, status of refining. Would I want the tickets to go from refining, skip all the other status in the middle and just go to done? 
or will I just have it open, meaning that people can just move it as they see fit, or will I restrict the transition whereby I can say that, oh, before a, a refinement ticket can go under in progress, it must meet uh, refined. And for me to do that, I'm going to add more status, then I'm going to go to under status, and add to status, I'm going to call this refined. So when I call it refined, and it's also saying that it's new, so I hit the plus sign, and then I hit add. So I created another stat another status, right? I have refining, uh, I have refined, right? So I created all of this under to do category because these are all just prep work we're doing to help prep us before we can get a ticket to meet the definition of ready, right? These are all the steps I'm doing. And also now it's showing me that, okay, now I have another status and this status is called refine. And I still have it under the category of to do. And currently it's saying allow all transition and that's not what I want. And let's just see what's explaining about this transition in according to Jira, right? Jira is saying that transition connect status, they represent action people take to move issues through your workflow. So this just summarize it. Jira is so simple to use. They make everything so simple. And now if you notice this refine also saying any status and the refining says any status. But now I would like to change that. I would like to change that for tickets. All these refining tickets should move from refining to refined. And for me to do that, I'm going to add the transition. That's why I'm going to hit the plus sign. And when I hit the plus sign, it's going to say create transition. I can do that here. Then I hit the plus sign. And now that I hit the plus sign, this showed up. It's saying that transition connect status, um, basically just connecting the status from one place to another. This represents the action people take to move issues through your workflow. They also appear as a uh, drop zone. And now what I want my status, remember, I want the from and to. It's, sure, it's going to show my, all my other status I've already created in the past. You know, I have this any status in case I don't want to do all of that. But what I want to particular do, I want to choose refining and choose refining to refined. So basically, as the team are working on it, it's going to be refining. And when they are done, all those tickets should move from refining to refined. It's going to ask me to name my transition. I'm going to name this transition ready for work. And you can name this anything your team agree or your team uh, want to do it. And I hit create. So now I have my, uh, my Jira workflow created, right? I first created the status, like I showed you, I stated I was going to show you how to do. And after I created the status, then I created the other status that I want to link, you know. I went from refining and then transition from the, the transition I created ready for work. They move to refine. And then I can also do this whereby I can create a transition from refine to to do. I can also do that um, to show you also just how simple and easy for you guys to create all the status in Jira and how to do that. And automatically, so at the side here, it's giving us mini tutorial like, okay, we just did this. So now we have this work going from refining, uh, which I'm calling it at refine, which means ready for work. And now let's add another transition. I already have this status here in progress, in, in testing, in done. So let's say I want to create another status that will go from refine to, I mean, another transition is going to go from refine to, to done. And then for me to do that, I'm going to go on that transition. So when I click on transition at the top, and I'm going to select the transition I want. I'm going to select from refined to, to do. So I'm going to call this selected or development. So uh, I already have the status to do created, right? Because almost all workflow, we have the status uh, to do created. Uh, so then this is the new status I created called refine. So now I want all my uh, status that have been selected for work uh, should be go, should be on the status of to do. That been refined, selected for work will now go to to do. So then I hit create. So now it connected it uh, so for me for us to see the connection. Let me just drag this at the top. And now it's saying that we have refining, refined um, to selected from development to, to do, right? 
So select that for development, then you can go into the to-do column. And if you look at here too, it's saying that we this is how the uh, baseline or workflow template that came. The baseline workflow came here with start, create, then it goes to to-do, right? Basically, when we create a story, it goes from, you see, even at the side, showing us the transition. It's showing that to start, because we have to start somewhere, right? So the template is like we start in here and we create, uh, we create any issues. Then any issues that we created, it will just go directly to to-do. I can also make that make that uh, transition to say that any any issue that we create uh, cannot go to to do. We can have it to go into refining. We can also do that before it can comes to to do. We can ensure that all those created story can go in that refine, or we can have it go go to backlog. We can also use backlog. Uh, start create backlog, then go just for you to follow through all the steps. And for me to make all that changes, I'm going to go under the transition again, because the transition is the one that's helping us transition our workflow. Each steps and each column, each month follows before we can actually uh, close our tasks. So now I can change this uh, uh, the name of this uh, transition, because the name this transition creates, and the path is to do. So when I click the drop down arrow, it's saying that I can call change this from, I can choose any other one, right? I can choose refinements. I can choose um, refining, right? Whereby I can then update the workflow, meaning that any ticket that's created can go through that to refining. We can also use uh, create a status called backlog. Uh, if I want to do that, so I just have to hit the, because the backlog goes under the category of to do. Now just click the plus sign and go from uh, start uh, backlog to refining, you know, and go from there. You can also do that. But it's the transitional name is called create. And I call it refine. And if I create refine, then I just hit update, update workflow. Uh, changes to this workflow will appear to the issue type selected. So all this issue type that we created on Jira uh, is saying that if I make these changes, because it's a huge change, because it's already, already existed status in place. And Jira is giving me warning that if I do make this change and I accepted this change, it will affect all this issue type on the workflow and how it's gonna flow on our workflow and our board. I say, yes, I agree, save and continue. So now it's even telling me I should view my column. It's giving me like a view on it, how it's gonna look uh, and it's gonna affect it on assign uh, status and all of that. Let's go back. So now let's look at this arrow. We went back now. So this is our current flow of work. We have um so we have our particular work going from when we start to create a ticket, it goes into refine, which we are calling this uh, ready for work, and then it goes to refine, uh, which is selected for development, it goes to to do, and it follows through the whole progress of in uh, in progress dev to qa in testing and done right now it has all this any but i can also make the transition that after in testing you can go under the approval and all of that so we can also create rules uh, this is one thing that it's also here that i can click rules or uh, do i have to pay money more money for this one <laughs> uh rules streamline your team process by limiting your team can use in transition by automatically performing an action when they do uh, only allow certain people to move an issue using a particular transition. So you can even restrict it to who can move what type of issues. Like for example, before like the column of uh, review for approval, you can have it that only the PO can approve those particular tags. Like before you can close it, you can have a rule like that. Restrict to when an issue has to be true in a specific status, meaning that an issue must face that particular status before we can do that. Restrict to when a field is a specific value. Only allow an issue to be moved using a particular transition when a field is a specific value or range of value. Or validate that people have a specific permission, you can do all of that and assign an issue. Restrict who can move an issue, I can do that one. But this is a demo one, so I don't have a lot of people. So restrict when an issue has been true as a specific status. Only allow an issue to be moved using a particular transition if an issue has and had a specific status. So restrict a field, a specific value, I can do that one. 
and select. So then I'm going to choose the transition, going back to transition. So then I can click on the arrow here. So this is all my transition currently. I have my refine to so refined, right? And I have in testing, uh, done, and in progress. And so, so I can restrict it to refine, to refining. Include this issue, current status, reverse this rule. I can then only allow the transition if this issue hasn't been through the selected status. So only consider this uh, issue most recent status. So I don't want just, I want all of it. Include this issue, current status. I'll click on that. So if I want to reverse this rule, I don't want to reverse this rule here, but I just want to make this a rule. So that means all my status, all my tickets must go from refining to refine. And then I add my rule. So now we have the rule in place, restrictions. So the rule is now already in place. If you look over here, uh, the icon for the rule is there. So it's telling us there is some kind of restriction that and you can do this in any phase in your workflow, in any phase in your workflow, uh, in your status or in your column in your board, you can add any rule. I'm just adding it here just for like demo purposes and stuff. So now let's create another status on that in progress. I know we did one for to do. Maybe we can add in progress status. We can call something like um ready for them. Not that we I use it though, but just like something just for to create to show you already for dev and I hit add and we can call this transition let me create another one uh under in progress status uh dev in progress hit the plus sign and hit add so now I have this ready for dev um which is almost the same as to do right, it is the same as to do. Um, because it's telling that it's ready for them to work on it. Or uh, instead, maybe you work in a team that on your to do column is is mixed with a lot of other different, like maybe mixing it with the UX designers and they're using that column to show that they're also their own work is ready. But at least it's ready for them because I know I've seen people use this status, but I see the to do column as basically the same as ready for the team to work on it. So now let's just create transition from ready for dev to dev in progress, right? When it's ready for them and then they're ready for in, in progress. And then, so now it's telling us the category, right? Remember the other category was to do. So now this category is in progress. And then you come under here, allow the transition in any status. I want to remove that. I don't want to allow the transition in any status. I'm going to add my own transition. And if I hit my transition, I'm going to select the ready for dev to dev in progress, which is the same as in progress, by the way. And I'm going to call uh, call this transition. See you all again in my next video.